Hey, welcome to Electron Online and in this video we're going to show you how to convert from complex numbers to polar form of the complex numbers called polar trigonometric form and we're going to show you how to take a point on a polar coordinate system and turn this into an equivalent complex number. So let's start over here first. So let's say we have the complex number z. z1 is equal to i, 1 plus i. So the real part is 1 and the imaginary part is i. And how do we put it in this form right here? So that the complex number now is written in what we call the polar or trigonometric form. To do that, we need to find both r and theta in this case. So let's start with r. So r1 corresponding to z1 is equal to the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared. So we take the real part squared and the imaginary part squared of the complex number there. So that would be r1 is equal to the square root of 1 plus 1, which is equal to the square root of 2. So that would be the magnitude of the polar coordinates, and that would be the absolute value of the, um, of the complex number. Next, we need to find theta. So we can find theta by taking the arctangent of the opposite side, which is the imaginary part, divided by adjacent side, which is the real part. So in this case, that would be the arctangent of b, which is 1, divided by a, which is 1. So again, the general form of a complex number, we could say z is equal to a plus bi. So we take the values 1 and 1, plug them in here, and of course, that would be the arctangent of, 40, of uh, 1, which is 45 degrees. So it'll be 45 degrees, which is equal to pi divided by 4. So now that we have both the r value and the theta value, we can now go ahead and plug it into that format. So we can say that z1 is equal to r. r would be equal to the square root of 2 times the sine or the cosine, the cosine of pi divided by 4 plus i times the sine of pi divided by 4. And that would be the polar form or what we call the trigonometric form of our first complex number. Let's do the same with the second complex number because it's a little bit more complicated right here. So let's go ahead and do that. We have z2 equals minus 1 plus the square root of 3 times i. So that means that r uh, sub 2, so the, the polar coordinate or the distance from the origin to the point on the polar coordinate system is equal to the square root of what we call a squared plus b squared, a of course being this number, b being that number right there. So we can say that r sub 2 is equal to the square root of negative 1 squared plus the square root of 3 squared. So that would be equal to the square root of 1 plus 3, which is equal to the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. That means r sub 2 is equal to 2. Now we have to find the angles. That may be a little bit more tricky because notice let me graph it real quick. If we're going to graph this on the imaginary and the real axis, notice that the real value is minus 1, so that would be minus 1 here, and the imaginary value is plus a square root of 3. So it would be 1 would be here, 2 would be there, square root of 3 would be about there, so that's the square root of 3. So we can see that this is the location of that complex number. All right, so we're looking for an angle which is right here. We're looking for this angle, or of course, we're also looking for this angle, so we can find the opposite angle right there. The <clears throat> All right, so now let's go ahead and do that. So we can say that the angle theta is equal to the arctangent of, now of course, we take a divide, no, b divided by a, so in this case, that would be equal to the arctangent of b, which is the square root of 3, divided by a, which is minus 1. So let's see which angle we get when we throw that into our calculator. So we take the square root of 3, and we divide by a negative 1, and then we take the arctangent, and we get minus 60 degrees. So we get theta is equal to minus 60 degrees. That's, of course, this angle right here. Since we want this angle, we're going to then take 180 degrees minus this angle of 60 degrees, so we get 120 degrees representative of that angle because in polar coordinates we always want to have the angle relative to the real axis right there. So therefore the angle that we want, theta sub 2, is equal to 180 degrees minus 60 degrees which is 120 degrees and of course 120 degrees that would be equal to, let's see, that would be equal to 2 thirds pi. So 2 pi would be 360 degrees divided by 3 would be indeed 120 degrees. All right, so now that we have r 
and we have theta, we can now write it in the polar coordinates. So now we can say that z2 is equal to r, which would be equal to 2 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3 plus i times the sine of 2 pi over 3. So this is taking the complex number over here and writing it into its polar or trigonometric uh, form. Now finally, let's say we have a number in its polar form. We have a radius and we have an angle. So here we can say that r is equal to 3 and pi divided by 6 is equal to theta. So theta is equal to pi divided by 6. So how do we write that into a complex number? Well remember that a can be considered to be r times the cosine of theta and b can be considered r times the sine of theta and we know of course that the complex number z will be equal to a plus bi. So to find a we simply take r and multiply times the cosine of pi over 6. So we have a is equal to r times the cosine of theta which is equal to 3 times the cosine of pi divided by 6 which is equal to 3 times the cosine of 30 degrees. Of course, the cosine of 30 degrees is 0.866, and then we'll multiply that times 3, and we get 2.6. So this would be equal to 2.6. Now we do the same for b. b is equal to r times the sine of theta, which is equal to 3 times the sine of pi divided by 6, which is 3 times the sine of 30 degrees, and of course the sine of 30 degrees is 0.5, so that would be equal to 1.5. So finally, since we now have a and b, we can now find the complex number. We can now find the form of the complex number. So z is equal to a, which is 2.6 plus b, which is equal to 1.5 times i, and that's how we convert from polar coordinates to the complex number. Now, just as a note. As you see this polar form, a trigonometric form like there, sometimes we also put it into different forms. Sometimes we can also write that z is equal to r, and then we put a symbol like that, and then we put a theta there. So sometimes this form can, can be written in this form, simply by giving you the r value, which is of course the absolute value of z, and the angle theta in terms of degrees or radians. So this is understood to be equal to that. So just as a, as a small side note, you might have seen that kind of writing before somewhere, so those really mean the same thing. So that's how we convert from polar to complex numbers and back and forth.